Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics and welcome back to another great unboxing video. Today I've got a very special car because this car was one that my Uncle Albert owned a very long time ago and it is the Austin Healey 100-6. Now this amazing Ravel kit is our subject for today and what is interesting about this is that I bought this model for my uncle a very long time ago and he never built it because apparently he was a stickler for details and there's some plastic pan that's missing under here under the chassis it would actually be a metal pan on the real car so I never built the model then he passed away and afterwards no one ever knew what happened to the model kit that I got for him. So my friend John Harries, who also recently passed away, I ended up getting this model from his family. This was part of the models in John's collection. So I can't actually wait to open this up and see what's inside because I never did get to see the model, you know, when, after I gave it to my uncle as a gift. So again, interesting stuff. Let's go down and open the box and see what's inside. Now we'll wind the clock all the way back to 1956 as we look at this amazing Austin Healey 106. Now this model kit is molded in 125th scale and it's part of the Ravel Classic Series. Limited edition of 5,000 pieces. So only 5,000 of these model kits are out there. This is a classic kit from over five decades of modeling history number 00023. Now this car, like I was saying, is quite significant because my uncle owned one and he had parked it in the back alleyway and over time people started to steal pieces off of it. So we ended up moving it into my uh, grandfather's garage and uh, he had to remove my grandfather's 1946 Packard Clipper and my uncle did that by... <laughs> dismantling the entire Packard and throwing it out in the trash. Yeah, it's not the greatest story, but uh, it is the history. On the side of the box, there are no pictures of the actual built model kit, but what we do have is this write-up. It says the Austin Healey 100-6 went into series production in 1956. The designation 100 stood for the 100 mile per hour the sports car could reach. The 6 referred to the six cylinders in line 2.7 liter engine. Compared with its predecessor model, the 100-6 had the chassis stretched in the door area. The bonnet now had an integral front air intake. The engine of the 6 developed 117 brake horsepower. The racy 2 plus 2 seater reached a top speed of around 167 kilometers an hour and accelerated from 0 to 100 in just 10.7 seconds. That, of course, is 0 to 60 in just 10.7 seconds if you're going off of the imperial measurement. Another thing that's interesting about this model is it says that it is made in Europe, but it is not made in Britain like you would think. It's actually made in Germany. Now, this model kit came out in 2010, but originally in 1959. So it is one of those old, rare type Ravel kits. And I'm interested to see how the body is assembled on this because back in that era they didn't know how to make a one-piece body or maybe that was just starting to come in but originally these were all molded in separate pieces so there'd be like a front nose section the side panels might be separate and the trunk lid might be separate then you glued it all together as one whole unit so let's take the lid off and see if that is what's going on in here and it appears to be <laughs> I can see some separate side panels and whatnot. There. Yeah, it is. Oh, well, that's okay. There's a lot of things in this bag. The wire wheels are actually molded right into the tires, so that would make a nice, easy one-paint, one-piece sort of assembly. We have some chrome down below. Not too much, though. I don't think the real Healy had a lot of chrome. Oh, we've got chrome-covered headlamps. So for you guys that want something more realistic, of course, you have to outsource those parts from your parts box. Just a simple windshield in here. And then, of course, we have our instructions. So already this is 14 years old. Huh, came out the same year as my Toyota. <laughs> Interesting. 
All right, so I'll clear all this out of the way and then we'll start by looking at the instructions. Here we have our instructions. And as you can see, this is a full spread out. What we have is the image from the box art with the Austin Healey and the driver getting ready to join in the race with the other sports cars in the background. This would be pretty cool to have beside a Corvette or some of the other sports cars in your collection. Now down below we have the history of the Austin Healey 106 and this is first in German as well as over here in English. This page of the instruction sheet shows all the paint colors we're going to be using and they have letters in these little flags and that tells you in the instructions what paint color will correspond with the model. On this side of the instruction sheet, we have the full exploded view of all our parts, including these grayed out parts that we are not gonna be using in this model build. But overall, this is what we have. As we open the instruction sheet, we get our first panel here, and this is one that you do have to glue together. It is the assembly of our engine block. So we have our cylinder head here, as well as the right and left hand side of the engine, which includes a transmission. We have a starter motor, we have a, looks like for the dipstick here, or a filler, maybe, and we have a coil. Panel 2 shows the completion of our engine with the dual carburetors going in here on the intake manifold, as well as the exhaust manifold. Now, I wonder if these are the old SU carburetors. I'm not too sure. I don't really know the entirety of the Healy engine, but here it has the fan and it's saying uh, maybe to file this down to 0 0.5 millimeters. But what, what I would suggest is find a drill that's the same diameter as here on the back of the fan, that peg, and then drill this hole deeper right into the engine block itself, and then just sink the fan in. Might be easier than just filing this down. I don't know. But at any rate, we have the timing chain cover and the generator, I believe, as well as the fan. And there's a decal that goes on here, but I'm not too sure where it shows. Then we have our drive shaft in the back being attached to the transmission. Over here in panel three, again, another assembly involving glue. What we have is the underneath of the front of the car. You can see the grill being installed in place as well as these hinges, and those would be for the hood. And then we have this little piece going in here, which looks like maybe part of the firewall. Not too sure. Now underneath the bonnet or the hood, we have the hinge being glued into position, as well as that little cool scoop that glues right into here. Panel five shows the interior with the transmission hump being glued in place. I do believe this is part of the parking brake in here. We have our gear lever selector stick, and we have this interesting panel being glued up underneath. We also have our floor pedals being glued into place and our front firewall. Here is assembly five turned around so that we're looking at the front of the firewall. And these are supports which are going up underneath the hood. Panel 7 is showing the assembly of the body, and like I was saying, this is, again, a not a one-piece body that we know now. It's actually made up of separate components. We have our right and left-hand side, the hood, the front splash apron, as well as the rear top of the trunk. And here we have a drying time. So it is saying that, uh, you know, to take your time here. I assume this is a half an hour for things to dry, or maybe from three o'clock to nine o'clock. So uh, what is that, six hours? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, about six hours. If you're gluing this together though, I would recommend like 24 hours to let it all dry. And uh, that of course is so that all the glue can set and everything and then go in and like clean up the seam lines where all these parts are and use your body filler and that sort of thing. Over here in panel eight, you can see our rear axle being glued in place. This is a two piece rear axle with springs molded in place. And again, it is saying to allow plenty of time for this whole thing to dry. 
Panel 9 shows our seats being glued to the floorboards as well as a cross member link in here. It looks like our seats could actually flip upward, which is really kind of cool. And uh, there we have all those paint color callouts in the flags. Panel 10 shows our firewall as well as the transmission hump being glued into place, our motor being installed on the chassis and frame, and then we have our upper A arms being glued into here as well as the front steering, or the tie rod actually. Where is that anti sway bar? Well, at any rate, give this ample amount of time to dry if you're building your model. Over here in panel 11, we have our dashboard, and it does show the use of decals. Oh, and here they are, decal 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the black numbers. And then there's one on the steering wheel itself in the center. Here we have our inner door panels. There'd be a right and a left-hand side. Oh, there's the... let's see, that's the left-hand side there. So here's the right-hand side being glued in. And these little tabs go into these little pegs or something to that effect. And they would glue on the side of the chassis. Panel 12 shows our trunk getting glued into place. And this is the floor of the trunk itself. Looks like a battery right here. As well as something that would be an antenna or maybe a rod that opens up the rear hatch. Or the trunk lid. Then here we have our seat backs being glued in for the rear seat as well as these side panels. Here in panel 13, again, we have decals, but what we have here is the front steering column being glued in and matting up with the back of the steering wheel. This goes through a hole on our firewall. Now, I'm not sure where the decals are in this. It is odd, you're kind of not getting a full message here, but it says to apply decals. So where do they go? I'm not sure. Here in panel 13, we can see our exhaust system being glued in place. This would attach to the back of the exhaust manifold and then snake its way out through the back of the car. Let's do panel 15 and 16 together because they are kind of small. So here we have our trunk lid getting its hinge in place, as well as the rear tail lights. And then we have our gas filler cap. And again, it's calling out for decals, which I do believe number nine is right here on the back of the trunk. Probably a Healy script. Now in panel 15, we have the door handles being put on as well as the rear view mirror and the windshield gluing into place here and here, as well as the glass for the windshield gluing in. And then this is the top of the rear back seat. Panel 17 is a continuation of panel 16. And here we're applying those chrome side spears, as well as our front headlights and the parking lamps down below, and then putting the hood in as well. Panel 14 shows our radiator being dropped into place in front of the engine. Now, I don't think there are any radiator hoses on this engine, so if you want to make some up, you can always apply them in. Panel 19 shows our body being dropped onto the chassis. We also have this piece of plastic which glues up in behind here. Not quite sure what it is entirely, but it is quite interesting. Here in panel 20, our final panel, you can see the bumper being glued into place, both front and back, as well as our two-piece wheels being glued on. And they will push in and snap on these little pins. So be very careful with this, that you have your wheel all ready to go before locking it in place forever, because you probably won't be able to get this out again. Make sure that your spokes line up front and back as they should. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really show how that goes. So just be careful. Look at real pictures of the real thing. Now, here is our three-piece wheel with the knockoff, the wheel itself with the tire. That's the front spokes and then the back spokes and rear of the tire. Now, if you want to see what my uncle's Healy looks like, check out this picture. So the first picture is from when they were towing it away at the end. And the other two pictures I sourced off the internet, basically because I don't have a color picture of what the car looks like. So based on the color of my uncle's car, which is some kind of olive green, I thought it was gold originally, but it's like an olive green. I found another one that I think is what his would look like.
Now the closest thing I have to that strange color is this weird black and decker jigsaw. And I do believe this is that olive green or whatever that the car is supposed to be. Although I'm not sure. I'm just speculating here. So let's take a look at the real model and see how the parts are. Here we have the side panels for Austin Healey 100. And you can see that they are rather interesting. Nice little type of shape to this car. We also have one of the inner panels. So I'll just bring this up to the camera here. I think I got a bit of dust on it or something. Looks like we need to clean them with some soap and water. But overall, I mean, it's very simplistic, but so is the real car. Turning this over, you can see some mold marks and a mold sink mark up in the inside. I'm not too sure if you can see this when the chassis and everything is in place, but boy, you can really see them here. So these all have to be cleared off. That's on the inner door panels. So again, not too bad, but it's just different to see how they created cars, model cars, back in 1959. Here are the other components for the car. So what we have is the front fender arrangement with the opening for the hood. Here's the hood itself. We also have our trunk inner with the nicely detailed molded in place battery. Probably the best one I've ever seen. And then we have our trunk lid. There is quite a bit of flash, but you know what? One of my friends, James, he was saying he would rather have flash on a model than to have a miscast. So imagine this with a big ripple in here. We're well, not a ripple, but just missing, you know, because not enough plastic got in there. So it's better to have some more plastic and be able to remove it than not have any plastic there at all. Now, looking at this, it is quite dainty, but I think a lot of the sports cars back in this era were, much like the Lotus Super 7 and the Triumph TR3 and those sort of things. They were all little small cars. You want light weight, you know, to get the speed out of them. So that is what these sort of things were. Again, a lot of big sink marks sitting in here, which need to be filled. Mold marks, which need to be filed flat for fit and finish reasons. And again, a lot of flash to remove. But overall, nice for the vintage. Next up, we have the chassis pan with the opposite side inner apron here, or door panels. we got the wheel arches there. Pretty cool. Look at these A-arms. These are really nicely done. It's not just a simple kit that was molded and there you go. This one actually has a lot of detail, especially for 1956 or 59, sorry, when it came out. Now here they've altered the mold stamp to make it say 1996. But boy, there are a lot of sink marks. That's the only downside to this, the flash and the sink marks. But I mean, let's not worry too much about that. Again, mold marks. It's cool that the inner panel here is wide open. Now, there might have been something there, you know, to put something in the side, because I don't think there was, you know, like a glove box or anything on this. But overall, quite simple. A ladder-style frame, like a Model T in here, with sections going out for the sides, so you can sit in the car. I'm not sure if this is the fuel cell or just part of the body shape. And I wonder where that panel that's supposed to be missing that my uncle was so concerned about. I think it might be... Well, no, that's the bumper horns, so I'm not sure. Next up, we have our right and left-hand side of the engine block, as well as the differential here with the rear springs. Not the full differential, just the bottom portion. Maybe top, if you're looking from underneath. Then we have our drive shaft. We also have the dual exhaust here and then one of the hinges for the hood. I also included the back panel and this, which, oops, I thought was um, something for the firewall, but it turns out to be the portion that's going to hold your hood on the hinge in up underneath your car. Now I was looking at this engine and I was wondering sort of how big it is because it looks kind of huge, doesn't it? So I've got a Model T engine here and it turns out to be just a bit bigger than the Model T engine, but that transmission really is quite huge. So 
That's always a cool thing. Doesn't look like a badly molded engine. Does look a little bit uh, soft on parts on the transmission though. But maybe that's how the real motor is. I'm not sure. I am going to have to get some research material on this little uh, Austin Healy just to make sure. But overall I think the molding is quite nice. Next up we have some more of the body panels as well as the bottom of the seat here for the rear. There we've got our transmission tunnel, nice dashboard in here, the windshield, as well as the back of the car, minus the trunk. There's that rolled panel in the back, so that must go up underneath. Then here we have our firewall as well. So bringing this up to the camera, see the nice dashboard, little gauges on there, very tiny. There's the transmission tunnel, firewall. Now let's turn it over. Got to be careful, I'm going to lose that back seat there. Some big mold marks up underneath, which again you'll have to take care of. But uh, overall, this seems to be pretty much detail on one side of the parts tree. But not bad. Not bad for 1959 casting. On this parts tree we have those steering linkages as well as the tie rods. I'm not too sure which is which. I think this one is because it's got the pivot points in here. Whereas this one's just bent around. Then we also have this little bar. Oh, I think that was the one we're not using. Uh, there's the front water pump and timing chain cover. We also have our steering wheel and the three floor pedals. Again, not bad. Simple detail. But like I'm, I was saying, I think these cars were quite simple. There's not too many uh, features other than just drive and get the thing going. There is a mold mark in here, which have to be sanded flat. And uh, flash and mold marks, of course, have to be removed. But overall, I think it's quite simple and neat. Our next parts tree includes some really cool parts. What we have is the seat backs, and they've got pins on them, so they will fold forward like the real car. We also have our top of our differential. We've got the entire front axle assembly. Look at these coil springs and everything. Really cool. There's the seat bottoms. Now, in the picture, it shows the... Uh, interior being flat black, but then these pipes along here are all in white. Now because this is white plastic, you could actually paint them flat black. Once that's dry, take your hobby knife and scrape along the tops and get the black paint off there, and you wouldn't have to try to hand pinstripe that, just to remove the top layer of paint. There we have the steering column going into the steering box. We also have these front horns which go up underneath on the dashboard. There's the top of the rear back seat. We also have the dual exhaust going out here. Two per cylinder. Got the dual carburetors, again two per cylinder. These are the inside uh, side panels which go beside the back seat. We have our valve cover and our radiator in here. And this piece. <laughs> and that piece there. Oop. And a fan and me punching the light housing. <laughs> There's that little package tray. I guess that that's a package tray for the interior. Again, really neat. Like the coil or core on the radiator. But we are basically uh, plagued with mold marks on this thing. There's our little bucket seats up there. Very cute design. Again, really cool stuff, and uh, should really look good in your model. What would you do to enhance these parts? Let me know in the comment section down below. And here we have our wheels and tires, all as one piece. These are pretty interesting, although you won't be using this one. But you could have it set aside if you're doing a race or a sports car diorama, and having it race around the track. Now at the back here we have the trunk hinge. And again, that is quite neat. Overall, these are not too bad. Now you will have to clean the flash off the wheels here in order to get everything to sit nice. There is bits that are sticking up. Overall, not too bad. The mold marks are inside the tire, so that's nice. Once you uh, get this together, no one will be able to see those. So yeah, again, really cool parts in here. 
and it should enhance that look of your model. As for glass, we have our windshield here and that's it. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it in the bag just to, you know, save it from getting scratched. But basically it's just a flat panel with a curve. What I do find interesting is that I've seen a few pictures of this Healy and it doesn't have the top of the windshield frame. Now I know I'm holding the glass, but you know, on the windshield frame itself. So I don't know if this was a two-piece thing that, you know, came apart or something, and somebody just unbolted the glass and took it out and just left the two side posts, or what's going on with that. But as you can see, the glass is quite simple and scratch-free. Here we have our chrome parts tree for our Austin Healy 100-6, and it's not too bad, but it is quite simple. Of course, there's not much chrome on the real car, but it does look like it's sucked in here and here. So I don't know quite what happened there. We got our grill, we've got our headlights. Now, unfortunately, there's no clear lenses, so they're molded solid. I might suggest maybe trying the ones from the AMT 50 Ford if you want to put in the glass. I don't know if it's the right diameter, though. <laughs> Have to find out. Now here I'm hitting my lamp. So anyway, there's a lot of little parts in here. Be careful when you take them off the parts tree not to lose them. You got your knockoffs, little side spear emblems, door handles. Thankfully they give you two sets. Rear view mirror for the inside looks like they give you two sets there as well. Then we have our bumpers and our chrome gas filler cap. Overall the chrome doesn't look bad on here. There's a grill, a little bit of a black wash or something would get that going. Or you could even just, you know, cut the center out and install a mesh like Pete would do. And there's our little scoop for the hood right there. Chrome's not bad, like I was saying. Bit of mold marks on the back, but uh, what can you do? Overall though, not bad. Finally, we have our decal sheet, and as you can see, it is really tiny. So here they're suggesting just cut out the license plate and not put it in water, but just to glue it right on the model. YNG117. Now, what I'm thinking is I could use those 1958 license plates that I printed off and put them on the car, which would be kind of neat. Then uh, my uncle, and my 125th scale uncle here, can be in one of the dioramas that I'm going to make that is for 1958. Printed in Italy for Ravel in Germany. Interesting. There's a Austin little emblem there. And uh, we've got our gauges in here, which you can drop in, as well as Healy script and the emblem for the Austin right there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at this model kit, as well as my uncle's real car and the car besides. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.